Brandon Sanderson responds to the Wired article. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, then you probably have been living under a rock in the last 24 hours. And also, if you're wondering why I'm wearing a suit, I just had a job interview and I'm too lazy to change. But I just seen that he posted a response to this article. Now, this article was posted to Wired yesterday, which called Brandon Sanderson is your god. And I'm not going to go through all of it because it's just way too long. And Daniel Green, he made a brilliant video where we went through the whole article. But basically, this article is just criticizing and hating on Sanderson for no good reason. I mean, Everyone can receive criticism, right? But a lot of these things in here are just so obnoxious that I don't even want to go through all of it. But basically, some of the things he says, for example, here, he calls Sanderson a weirdo, basically for being a Mormon, which is just absolutely ridiculous. And then he also wrote down here, I find Sanderson depressingly, story-killingly lame. I mean, that's just plain rude. And then down here, he writes about Sanderson, he talks a lot, but almost none of it is usable, quotable. I, beg I began to think... This is what I drove all the way from San Francisco to the suburbs of South Lake City in the freezing cold that I winter for. This must be why nobody writes about Brandon Sanderson. And then in front of Sanderson's wife, he even says, Maybe nobody writes about you, I say to Sanderson, because you don't write well. I mean, when does it just become plain bullying? I mean, if you actually had some criticisms, then that would be absolutely fine. I mean, Sanderson, he's the one of the biggest authors in the fantasy genre for sure. But this is just plain weird because it almost seems like this author since Sanderson is just quite average and doesn't have any baggage or anything he just had to invent something and he's now just being plain plain rude I mean you can read this article if you want to I wouldn't even recommend it but you can do whatever you want obviously but this is just plain malicious and Sanderson he actually wrote a response and I haven't looked at this response yet so I thought it would be fun to read it together and just get our reactions so he posted it on reddit as you can see here is by Mistborn on the Wired article so let's read this all I appreciate the kind words and support. To be fair, the book community have come together here and really supported Sanderson, which is absolutely wonderful to see. Not sure how or if I should respond to the Wired article. I get that Jason, he's the author, in writing, it felt incredibly conflicted about the fact that he finds me lame and boring. I'm baffled how he seemed to find every single person on this trip, my friends, my family, my fans, to be worthy of derision. Yeah, I mean, that is just one of those things that is just so malicious as well, because even you could argue, okay, Sanderson, he can potentially take it, because he is massive, but, like, he criticizes the family, the fans, it's just so, so messed up. But he also feels sincere in his attempt to try and understand. I don't think he is sincere. While he legitimately seems to dislike me and my writing, I don't think that's why he came to see me. He wasn't looking for a hit piece. I'm not sure, Sanderson. He was looking to explore the world through his writing. In that, he and I are the same, and I respect him for it. Even if much of his tone seems quite dismissive of many people and ideas I care deeply about. Well, it definitely seems like Sanderson is taking the moral high ground here, which I love to see. I mean, Sanderson, he is just such a class act. He always just seems to find the best things in people and he even compliments and says he re re respects the author of this article that literally just bullied him. So great respect for Sanderson for writing that. But I'm not really sure if I'm, I agree on all of it. He says Jason wasn't looking for a hit piece. I mean, that article is literally just bullying. I mean, if that's not a hit piece, then I don't know what that is. But great respect for Sanderson for keeping a respectful tone. The strangest part for me is how Jason says he had trouble finding the real me. He says he wants something true or genuine, but he had the genuine me all the time. He really did. What I said apparently wasn't anything he found useful for writing an article. That doesn't make it not genuine or not true. Oh yeah, that is absolutely so true, Sanderson. And I also think that most people know that that is his genuine. He is nerdy, he is fun, he loves to be at the center of attention, he is extroverted, but that is what he is. I mean, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of hours on, of YouTube content and people that have been to conventions and everyone says the same. That is what Sanderson is like. And it truly seems like, as he says here, I'm not offended that the true me bores him. Honestly, I'm a guy who enjoys his job, loves his family, and is a little obsessive about his stories. There is no hidden trauma, no skeletons in my closet, just a guy trying to understand the world through story. This is kind of boring from an outsider's perspective. No, it isn't. I love this. I can see how it is difficult to write an article about me for that reason. I mean, I do kind of get that Jason probably had a hard time making an article full of drama, but just bullying is just, it makes no, no sense. Let's continue. But at the same time, I'm worried about the way he treats our entire community. I mean, Sanderson, he always takes the high ground and I just love this. 
He is so selfless. He doesn't talk about himself, how much he's hurt yet. He talks about how he took offense in how Jason treated our community. I understand that he didn't just talk about me, but about you. As has been happening to fantasy fans for years, the general attitude of anyone writing about us is that we should be ashamed for enjoying what we enjoy. In that, the tone feels like it was written during the 80s. Look at these silly nerds liking things. How dare they like things? Don't they know the thing they like is dumb? Wow, and I also think that is a really good point. That's probably also why there has been such a backlash. Because we the read fantasy, we are so used to people looking down on us for liking these nerdy things. And the fact that Sanderson starts this response by actually protecting the community just really shows that he seems to be such a genuine guy. I mean, obviously, he's not perfect. And if he sometimes in the future does something horrifying, we will judge it. But at the moment, it just seems so wrong to treat Sanderson like this, especially when you read stuff like this. Let's continue. As a community, let's take a deep breath. It's all right. I love this. I appreciate you standing up for me, but please leave Jason alone. Okay, maybe I shouldn't be making this video then. <laughs> this might feel like an attack on us, on you, but it's not. Jason wrote what he felt he needed. And as a writer, he is my colleague. Please show him respect. He should not be attacked for sharing his feelings. If we attack people for doing so, we make the world a worse place because fewer people will be willing to be their authentic selves. Okay, that's it. I'm going to buy all of Sanderson's books for life. I mean, how can you hate this guy? Just hear him. He is literally defending Jason. And I mean, to be honest, even though I think that article is horrendous, experiencing backlash is never nice. And Sanderson probably knows that his community is way, way bigger than Jason's community. So I'll definitely reiterate what Sanderson does, says here. If you're gonna be very mad about this article, try to at least attack the arguments and also leave just Jason alone. I think that's probably the most effective way. And I hope this video will just highlight how amazing Sanderson is because this response is literally blowing my mind. <laughs> that said, let me say one thing. You, my friends, are not boring or lame. In Going Postal, one of my favorite novels, Sir Terry Pratchett has a character fascinated by collecting pins. Not pins like you might think. They aren't like Disney pins or character pins. They are pins like tacks used to pin things to walls. Outsiders find it difficult to understand why he loves them so much, but he does. In the book, pins are a stand-in for collecting stamps, but also a commentary on the way we as human beings are constantly finding wonder in the world around us. That is a part what makes us special. The man who collects those pins, Stanley Howler, is special. In part because of his passion, and the more you get to know him or anyone, the more interesting you find them. That is truism in life. People are interesting, every one of them, and being a writer is about finding out why. That is so, so wholesome. I just love that. I mean, if there's anything that we as a community need to do is to stand together because we already are a minority, as opposed you could call it, when it comes to not that many people like books and even less people like fantasy books. And I just love that he just really focuses on the value every human being has. Sanderson, you have my respect. In that way, the ability to make Stanley interesting is a part of what makes Pratchett a genius, in my opinion. That's writing, not merely using words. It's what I aspire to be able to do so, and you're great at using words. <laughs> People are wonderful, fascinating, brilliant balls of walking cr contradictions, passion and beauty. I find it an exciting challenge to make certain that the perspective of the washwoman or the monk sitting and reading a book is as interesting in a story as that of the king or the tech mogul. And I find value in you. Your passion for my work is a big part of why I write. You make my life special. Thank you. Okay, I think with this response, Sanderson has literally cemented himself as being the king of the fantasy community. This is what we need more of. And I have such great respect for this. Sanderson, if you're watching this, thank you so much. I mean, I do understand how making this video might create a bit more toxic toxicity, but that is really not my intention. Reading this just really, really touched my heart. And, and let's do what Sanderson does here. Let's actually just respect Jason and leave him alone. We already have enough toxicity in this community. I absolutely agree with this. I really appreciate everyone coming out to support Sanderson. I definitely think we did the right thing here because that article was just absolutely malicious. But let's, just like Sanderson did here, let's take the high moral ground here and just focus on the things we love, which is books. 
Sanderson, he deserves to be angry or bitter about this article. But truly, the fact that he responds like this is just, he is a role model. Now, there is a note here. Note, I do want to make it clear, again, that I, that I bear Jason no ill will. I like him. Please leave him alone. He seems to be a sincere man who tried hard to find his story, discovered that there wasn't one that interested him, then floundered in trying to figure out what he could say to make a deadline. I respect him for trying his best to write what he obviously found a difficult article. He's a person, remember, just like us. Yeah, that is wonderful. The perfect response to end this whole article. And also, you know, we are human beings. Jason, he might actually either be regretting writing this article now, or maybe later down in life, he might actually realize how stupid it was to write this article. People can change, and people sometimes make really, really big mistakes. That doesn't mean that there's no mercy, or that he cannot get any redemption at all. And I really, really appreciate Sanderson for writing this. I mean, just imagine if someone wrote an article like this, you should be bitter, but Sanderson actually just says we should respect him as a human because we're all human beings. And I think that is wonderful because if there's one thing that the internet needs more of, then it is compassion and forgiveness towards people. And if Jason actually comes out and says he is truly sorry for writing this article, then I really think that we should at least give him a second chance. I think Sanderson really, he just encompasses here a lot of the things that are so important and lacking in a lot of communities. So thank you so much, Sanderson. This was a perfect response. And also a really great way to maybe wrap up a lot of the drama that was kind of brewing with this article. So yeah, I'll do what Sanchez does here. I'll upload this video, but I'll try my very best to just leave this drama here alone from now on. So yeah, I'm really excited to read The Tress of the Elmer Sea. I haven't read it yet because it's not released in the UK and didn't back it. But now I will definitely pre-order it because I'm so excited and I mean, I don't care. Sanderson, he can have all my money after reading this response. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video and also, as always, a special thanks to my Patreon for supporting what I do here. I really, really appreciate it. All right, let me know what you guys think about this article and this response. I would love to hear your thoughts.